Um, I'm from the ADS, obviously, the Archaeology Data Service. I won't uh, bother to mention anything else about that right now because uh, it's a quick trot through uh, Oasis, mostly. Uh, where Oasis is at the moment, um, the Herald project, which has just finished, which has looked at uh, the possibilities of redeveloping Oasis, and the findings of that project, and what a new Oasis might look like. So, essentially, the Oasis system is a transit lounge for transferring data from one place to another. Okay, so, um, if we look at that, it takes uh, data from field work, uh, people input that data into the system, that then goes out to HERs for checking, They're, they can download the data, that then goes to, apologies for the old logo, uh, <laughs> Historic England and the Royal Commission for Scotland, and then from there, that record is then signed off. That then goes into uh, the Grey Literature Library, so um, the reports are made available online. Um, it goes into the Geophysical Survey database, if there's a geophysical element to that OASIS record. It also feeds discovery and excavation in Scotland, so that when people are filling in records for that, they've got the start of a record from OASIS. They also have an administrative system for requesting radiocarbon dates. The data from OASIS for the event for that is used to populate that form. It's used in research projects like the Roman Rural Settlement Project that's going on at the moment. It, um, Oasis records can go into or can be used by our e-archiving system so you don't have to fill in your project metadata again. You can just uh, suck it out of the Oasis system using the Oasis ID. It goes into the, um, the MEDIN portal, the Marine Environment Data Information Network, and from there potentially it can go into data.gov. So that's what OASIS does at the moment. Does it by various different means. Um, most of it's with a RESTful web service and it's also using OAI PMH for those who are interested in such detail. <laughs> However, there are acknowledged problems with OASIS, the system that has existed for the last 10 years. Um, there's problems with flow, workflow, according to uh, how it, it works with people's uh, data. So. Does the data going into OASIS go into OASIS at the right time for the HERs to get it out? In some places it does, in other places it doesn't. This means that in some cases the data is stuck and in some places it isn't used at all. So this led to the Herald project. This is a redevelopment of OASIS. OASIS will never be called Herald. Herald is just the project looking at the redevelopment. It's just finished. Um, it was a user needs survey uh, and telephone interviews. It's produced a detailed functional specification for what a new OASIS system might look like. Um, and the findings, uh, the report's just gone to Historic England a couple of weeks ago. So what were the findings of the survey? It told us that regardless of how good your internet system, online system is going to be, without communication, engagement and training, it will not get anywhere. People need to know what the system does before they will even think about using it. We need flexible workflows. Oasis was, the original Oasis was designed as a, as a linear flow between um, field workers, HERs and um, national bodies. That flow doesn't always work that way. It needs to be more flexible. Different people in different areas of the country want to have access to different levels of data from Oasis. Some people want very rich records, some people want very um, brief records, because there's no point in Oasis duplicating effort that is going on and recording that is going on in other ways. Um, this is the second crucial point. The first crucial point was the communication one. The second crucial point is that um, it provides a system which archives and disseminates unpublished fieldwork reports, the <laughs> unfortunately named grey literature. The archiving and uh, dissemination of those is a key product of the OASIS system. A new thing that a, that a new OASIS could do would be to include the museum's community to finish off that flow of a, of a project and turn it into more of a project management system 
um, so that the recording of, uh, of an archive deposition could be done through OASIS as well. And the museums that we've had feedback from are very keen on this. There's also um, a need from the specialist community that, uh, that they would want their specialist reports to go up through OASIS as well to find a way to get through into um, uh, the Grey Liter Literature Library as well. And also recording more detailed metadata in some cases. The third key point... Oops, I've gone too far. I've gone too far. The third key point is... Um, a simple to use and automated system for synchronizing data and transferring data from OASIS to HERs, from HERs back to OASIS, so that this data can flow uh, without problem, because that is the main sticking point of the current OASIS system. It's too hard to get the information out, people end up copying and pasting it, that is pointless. Well, it's not pointless, but it's time consuming and inefficient. And then finally, a move, a move from the focus um, of just archaeology to more uh, all-encompassing historic environment. The other thing that came up with, uh, from the survey was how different local authorities use their, or, or how they, they structure their workflows. Now, that over there, <laughs> I'm just going to take a brief moment to explain what this is. These are all the different roles in, um, in the local authority. So you've got somebody who, well, a situation where nobody does it, a multifaceted role with city or county archaeologist, the city or uh, county archaeologist, or the planning archaeologist, just the planning archaeologist, the planning archaeologist, or the HR, HR <laughs> officer, and then just the HR officer. And across the bottom, you've got who looks at the planning application, who sets the development control brief, who signs off the control brief and the report, who starts the HER record, and who validates the OASIS record. The width of the line means more people do it that way. Now, that's only 60% of the respondents. The other 40% were all divided into 1% little groups. So that's 40 other ways of doing that process. So no one size fits all. Potentially, you know, you've got hundreds of different uh, combinations there. Anyway, so there was, along with that, you've got that different people want to start the records, different people want big records, little records, they want big records, but they're not sure they'll use them. But they still want somebody to collect that data. So looking at a new OASIS system, the idea is that it would be able to collect data at different levels. So you've got these three different uh, levels. You've got Oasis Lite, which is a very brief record, uh, essentially a bibliographic record with a bit more information on it. You've got Oasis Basic, I'm hoping to call it Oasis Standard actually, but um, that would constitute a basic HER record that's more similar to the current OASIS record. And then you've got OASIS Plus, which is a way of recording lots of extra bits of uh, event-specific information. So radiocarbon dates, environmental information, the geophysics module, which currently exists in OASIS, would fit into that. And also that records would always be open. So you could always potentially add extra information to a record. And if you had signed up as an organisation or it was a record which was in your area, you would then be um, notified that week of what had gone on in your area. This is an enhanced bibliographic record. You've got the basic bibliographic data, and then you've got what, when, where, and most importantly, any other associated identifiers that go with that record. That means that even if OASIS is only collecting a, a subset of the information, you can tie it to the full HER record, you can tie it to the museum um, archive, you can tie it to all the site codes and things like that that might be relevant for it. Now, as uh, Chris was just saying, Wales and Clue Powers have just looked at uh, or signed up to uh, transferring their reports and records from the HER into OASIS. Now, this is essentially what OASIS Lite could be. So you would have uh, the record from OAS, uh, the record from the HER. You've got an enhanced bibliographic record. The report gets wrapped up in a little sword client, sent to Oasis, 
gets imported, we archive it, give it a DOI, make it permanent, goes into the Grey Lit Library, the DOI gets sent back to the HER, and then you've got a lovely little, lovely little set sort of situation there. If all goes to plan with the current timetable, a new oasis would be due at roughly the end of uh, 2017. Uh, this is what it currently looks like. Unfortunately, green and yellow on this screen have kind of merged. Um, I was going to say all the, all, the, <laughs> all the yellow bits are new, all the blue bits are links, links out to external systems. That's all I'm going to say about that because that I'm well run over time if I tried to explain it fully. <laughs> um, aside from that, the last thing I was going to say is that the findings of the survey will be coming up on the Oasis blog. There were eight different user groups, so there'll be eight different blog posts according to the different user groups who answered the survey. That should be coming up in the next few weeks. Okay, thank you. Yeah.